What's up guys, my name is Tom, welcome back to another video for another episode of my F1 2020 My Team Crew Mode. Today it's time for episode 42, round 5 I believe in season 3. If you haven't watched the previous episode, it's been a while since the last episode of my team so I want to apologize, I've been super busy but we, I'm trying and trying to give my best to finish this series before F1 2021 coming to the market. But today is time for the Spanish Grand Prix, buying a minor upgrade that should be ready for the Monaco Grand Prix, we're going to have a decent hero package ready ready to the next raid. Hopefully it's going to be ready uh, because we really need this aero boost, especially a track like Monaco where straight line speed doesn't mean that much. But anyway, we're going to focus at the Spanish Grand Prix, a very complete track. It has everything, has straight lines, it has the downforce areas. So this is going to be a great race to show um, where are the teams. If we are stronger than Mercedes, you can see the performance shot that at the moment we are behind most of Mercedes. They brought, I want to say, maybe a major upgrade and uh, then we are already pulling away from the lights of the Ferrari and the Red Bulls, the Aston Martin, despite being um, in the midfield in the performance shot um, so far this season they haven't scored a single point so it's been a dreadful season at the moment for those guys but here we are on practice just doing our things and uh, hopefully it's going to be a very smooth weekend not in this way as we actually made a spectacular spin and we managed to recover that pretty beautifully as we end up in the gravel trap so let's see the replay I was trying to go flat on the harder comparative tire it's so good it feels really nice to go with uh, to drive with these season free cars but uh, going on the hard tires flat fruit and free maybe it was too much with some fuel on the car some extra fuel you know but anyway end of practice one George Russell goes fastest followed by Hamilton and Leclerc and then we find ourselves in B13 so don't worry it's just practice I think we have a very good chance to challenge the Mercedes um, in this weekend as we are doing the qualifying sim program open the DRS across the line and for the time being going to be the fastest so far in this session ahead of Sebastian Vettel but as we skip forward until the end of the section George George Russell goes fastest and we are separated by less than a tenth of a second so things are really looking good for us for Tom Motorsport but uh, let's not uh, eliminate uh, the Mercedes cars um, from the equation because uh, um, they've been looking so far in this season super strong and it shows by just uh, you know looking at the performance chart but anyway we're going to buy another upgrade this time um, for the rear of the car and this should be ready as well for the Monaco Grand Prix so I was uh, um, planning to buy another one at the end of practice when we received the resource points and they have it and um, this is going to be really important if we don't win this race um, we have to win uh, mandatorily at Monaco because uh, um, the championship might start um, to get away from us when it comes at least for the constructors and we need uh, um, also very good performances because at the moment we find ourselves behind our teammate and the two monster Mercedes after a dreadful race at China but anyway we're already in qualifying being a little bit disturbed by the Haas McDonald's of Lando Norris and uh, through the final corner is really annoying to do that chicane it ruins all the spectacle but anyway it is what it is we have this track and we have to deal with it and across the line of 14.0 if I'm not wrong if I'm reading well and it's only enough to put it in P6 and that was actually kind of frustrating you can see me shaking the wheel uh, because the house kind of ruined a bit of a lap but it seems not because we didn't improve on the first sector and we're not improving by that much and we're just in P13 so things are not looking good at the moment I really need to make big gains in the third sector you can see that we actually are making but you can see that the struggle in qualifying are still continuing in this career mode so far we don't have any pole position at the moment I can tell you already that George Russell I think is in provisional pole position so it's been uh, Mr. Saturday as well as but through the final corner we go open the DRS we're going to just improve by two tenths of a second and actually things are not looking good as well for Hamilton which finds himself in sixth place and they have it we are in eighth place and provisional pole position right now actually it is Valtteri Bottas but George Russell is not that far and you can see that our teammate is one second faster than so definitely it is a big red flag for us at the moment as we are trying to make a final lap a final lap of the session but you can see that we have three seconds on the clock so this is going to be really tight zero seconds and unfortunately we're not going to be able to do a third lap and try to get up some places we're going to start in eighth place for this Spanish Grand Prix so once again a disappointing qualifying and that is really really bad when it comes to the championship but thankfully qualifying doesn't give us points let's try to pull something through in the race you know that my race pace generally is much much better than the qualifying pace so never say never in Formula 1 it's not the end of the world we have a long race ahead of us so without further ado let's go to the race for the Spanish Grand Prix the Spanish Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula 1 calendar for over 30 years now and for good reason do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996 
That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari and we've had many more iconic moments since. It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730 meter sprint down to turn one at this 2.9 mile racetrack. Overtaking is challenging through these 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high speed excitement to be found, including the flat out turn three and the terrifying blind right of turn nine. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and starting next to them is George Russell. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Bottas, Charles Leclerc and Vettel, Sainz, Thomas, Albon and Esteban Ocon, Kvyat, Ricardo, Antonio Giovinazzi and Perez, Stroll, Magnussen, Lando Norris and Pierre Gasly, Latifi, De Vries, Giotto and Nobuharu Matsushita. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Thanks Jeffrey and welcome guys to the Spanish Grand Prix. A very gloomy day out to the circuit of Barcelona. Starting on the softer Comparafta, starting in P8 after a dreadful qualifying. We really need to pull something free in the race in order to be in the championship battle. I was trying to maybe get a cheeky one stop, but it seems that the game doesn't allow me. And when it comes to Strachi, um, it seems that it's going to be a 50-50. Pia Gasly is outside of the top 10, however he's going to start on the softer Comparafta because he qualified inside the top 10 however he has a great penalty as we are very ready to the start of the Spanish Cup you can see Verstappen getting ahead of Bottas in qualifying and it slides out and away we go 33 laps ahead of us at Barcelona and it's a great start side by side with Sebastian Vettel I think already clear one of the Gulf McLarens as we go very gingerly into the first corner dive all inside we go not just a Vettel but maybe a Max Verstappen look how signers go round the side of the Red Bull great start from the Spaniard in his own race and he finds ourselves already in P6 if I'm not wrong Lewis Hamilton leads the way I believe followed by George Russell and then Valtteri Bottas which managed to overtook Verstappen um, at the start and we have actually Verstappen himself um, ahead of us so it's been a good start as I'm trying to create a look around the outside of Max Verstappen this is very close match I really need to gain these places as soon as I can but at the same time I must not risk a front wing damage I had enough at the Chinese Grand Prix as we are really close to the Red Bull but I can't afford to lose time with these guys because we are in another league slipstream on the Red Bull we're going to try to go run as I'm moving very aggressively to the right hand side of the track and here we go always going to have the better traction it seems that we're going to have but Verstappen still try to come back but it's not enough definitely this Tom Motorsport car is much much stronger than Red Bull despite being out qualifying by him in qualifying quite ironically but anyway we're going to press on as we're getting really close to the McLaren Gulf of Carlos Sainz but they have it your race leader Hamilton Russell uh, Bottas and then Sainz and then myself closing down the top five as we're trying to get a slipstream of Carlos Sainz but it's going to be a really challenge to overtake a McLaren in the straights because he has that Mercedes uh, power at the back of that car so it's going to be quite a challenge because that McLaren is very slippery on the straights hopefully we can do something maybe in the third sector which is a sector that uh, I've been looking good over the course of this weekend but they have it your race leader Lewis Hamilton so far he has won every single race of this season with the exception of the last episode which was won by George Russell but skipping full on to lap three I'm trying and trying to catch color signs but he still has DRS from Valtteri Bottas and this is not ideal because I'm struggling so much and at the same time I'm uh, managing uh, damaging my tires not managing I'm trying to do that but uh, uh, getting stuck on the dirt here you can uh, this track really affects you when it comes to be stuck uh, behind another driver you can see that uh, we deployed the DRS but uh, we're still uh, too far from uh, color signs because we lose a lot on the first sector which is kind of shocking because we've been looking good um, on on the last sector of the circuit so I'm going to take a risk and pit already in this lap and fit a brand new set of medium tires how to do something I'm not going to be stuck forever in P5 and uh, from my experience in these F1 games um, the undercut it can be really powerful um, at uh, the circuit of Barcelona it will depend how we're going to do these out laps but hopefully these guys are going to start to get slow and slow thanks to the DTA plus and um, the old softer compared of tires and managing the traffic of the medium runners will be vital because uh, you know we are in a different race but they have it, yellow 
Stripe Tires on our car. The yellow really suits well with the Fuchsia, but that's not really important. What is going to be important now is the pace that we'll have. You can see uh, uh, for a brief second one of the Williams PlayStations. These guys are going to be mega, mega slow, and we need to dispatch them as uh, quickly as I can. Let's go a little bit deep into the first couple of corners as I'm trying to gain as much time as I can. Skipping the, all the way forward to the end of lap 6, setting personal best. So definitely this is a good sign as we're getting closer to the Williams PlayStation of Nick the Freeze. So he's going to be the, uh, the first victim of this afternoon. Open the DRS, gaining and gaining on the Williams cars. And you can see that some guys are exiting the pits. The lights of Verstappen. And I think this might work on Verstappen. And maybe on Carlos Sainz. Ronnie side we go. Look at the speed that we managed to get on the McLaren. And Ronnie side now we go fruit and free. What an overtake we did on the Spaniard. Fantastic stuff. That was textbook. We have to watch the replay of this move. Ronnie side not just of Verstappen and the freeze, but as well of Carlos Sainz. Look at the speed that we carried through the first couple of corners. We have to watch the replays to see the speed difference was unbelievable. You know, the tires are still not in the optimal temperature when you exit the pits. But you can see that I managed to thread the needle. To be fair, I think Sainz left a little bit too much room. Uh, I think he made things a little bit easier. I'm not going to lie. But I'll take that every single day of the week. And you're going to see Verstappen's POV. You're going to see the speed difference was unbelievable. That was amazing on the limit. And I have to thank as well for Nick the Freeze for giving that vital slipstream that extra speed. Because if it wasn't him, I dare to say that we would still be behind Carlos Sainz. So thank you so much. Let's move on because uh, virtually at the moment we are in fourth place as we are now closer to the Alpine of Nobuharu Matsushita. The Alpines have been struggling a lot this season. The very shaky exit out of turn two from the Japanese run. Outside we go through turn three. Look at the grip difference that we have against these guys. They don't have any chance whatsoever. And we are up into P15. Pia Gas is still stuck behind of one of the Williams PlayStation. This time of Nicolas Tiffy um, on the softer compound. I remember he had that grid penalty. And uh, if you ask me, this is not the best place to get a grid penalty. So Porsche not uh, doing the best management when it comes to the power unit components. As Esteban Ocon is out of this race. So one less McLaren in the Spanish Grand Prix. As now we are getting slipstream on the Porsche car. Down inside we go through the hairpin. I was trying maybe to take a look on Latifi as well. But we're going to wait for the start finish rate and we are up into P15 so that is a shame Gasly has been looking good so far this season um, the Porsche cars in general uh, Kvyat has been looking good as well so it's a bit of a shame that uh, they are taking this grid penalty um, at this exact track you know it could have been worse it could have been Monaco but you can see in the replay cameras the train the huge train that we have ahead of us the lights of the Williams the Haases the Alfa Romeos and even the Aston Martins are looking so slow so far this season as we fly past Nicolas Latifi and we are up into P12 and there you have it Valtteri Bottas going trying to make a move on uh, and uh, Luca Kyoto yes it is Luca Kyoto on the offer mail and look at us go run inside of Kevin Magnussen as I'm trying to get closer and closer to Bottas this is really important um, getting ahead of Bottas it will depend on how we're going to manage the traffic as uh, now he cleared the offer mail Veloce of Luca Kyoto run inside we go now of the offer mail trying to lose not that much time with these back markers because they are super slow and they are really going to damage our race around that side we go once again and I think we made a tiny bit of contact with the Italian but thankfully he didn't spin so we're going to have a look at his POV to see what really happened I think I didn't leave that much space so um, yes I have to lift my hand maybe I would get a five second time penalty for that that was maybe too aggressive for me so let's forget that and press on press on because we are around that side of Bottas and the Russell already exited the pixie on the softer compound after so very interesting strategy we're going to talk about that later because Bottas and Russell are not, are not making these moves as fast as I would wish and this is great for us this is so important if you want to get ahead of the Mercedes like I said uh, managing the traffic is so vital around into this track and down inside we go off the monster Mercedes into the hairpin and we are ahead at least of what one of them I think Hamilton already pitted and he managed to jump all this traffic so I want to say Hamilton has this race in, in his hand unless there is a safety car that changes all the race but in 
no more conditions, Hamilton is in the league of his own and he's going to take the win of the Spanish Grand Prix. But for us, we still need to manage these black markers. Thankfully, we are at the moment ahead at least of one of the Mercedes cars, but at the same time we're losing points to Hamilton, which is not ideal as Russell is getting a slipstream on Sergio Perez, but not that much. And actually we're gaining even more. I tried to go down inside, but it wasn't enough and I didn't want to risk that much because the, the last thing that I want is make contact with that team because the two top motorsport cars at the moment find themselves ahead at least of one of the monster Mercedes but I can't lose that much time with these guys because Russell seems that he doesn't have the pace so I decided to dive down inside into the hairpin I left a little bit of space in order to not make uh, lose that much time and uh, not get to risk being overtaken by Valtteri Bottas and now is our time to get a move on Sergio Perez still in the same lap and are we going to dare dive down inside yes we're going to do that that was really really aggressive switching to the right hand side of the track and we are up into seventh place and this can be virtually P2. At the moment, this man is leading the race. is Daniel Kvyat, the first of the medium compound runners. And he's doing a cracking job at the moment, followed by the Alpine of Danny Ricardo and then the virtual leader, Lewis Hamilton. We need to watch out for these two guys uh, because remember that we still need to make another stop and uh, they're going to be basically maybe a pit stop ahead of us, basically, as we're going down inside of Lando Norris and it doesn't give, to give us that much room. So once again, um, a little bit of a salty moment uh, from Norris. Uh, first it wasn't qualifying uh, and then it was at the Dutch Grand Prix and he wasn't respecting that much the blue flags and now he's not making things uh, that easy. Come on Lana, we are in a different race. I know that we are in the same racing lap but come on, a little bit uh, um, of friendship please. I know that you didn't deliver the results at uh, the final season and now you find yourself um, in a uh, crap car, let's say like that. But now through the start, finish straight we go and this is going to be an easy move. We managed to outbreaking pretty uh, nicely and we are up into sixth place. Now ahead of us we have Lance Stroll and then Antonio Giovinazzi and then it's going to be really hard to catch Kvyat and Danny Ricciardo because they've been pulling away massively in this race. They may be heading, at least one of them, for a podium finish and who knows both of them can be heading into a podium finish so that is going to be an absolute story for this race. Maybe the two drivers of the day as now I'm getting closer and closer to Antonio Giovinazzi on the other Alfa Romeo Veloce, DRS open, slipstream aggressively moving into the right hand side of the track so it seems that this time we're going to the long way around and this is going to be an easy move going a little bit wide and I didn't get the traction that I would uh, deserve you know but anyway we are up into P4 as Kvyat is pulling into the pits and we're going to be promoted into P3 but it's sooner rather than later is going to be maybe in the next lap because now the medium runners are pitting so I want to say that they're going to fit the harder compound of tires yes they're going to do that maybe they could fit the softer compound of tires but it's still a little bit of a long way to go in this race so that would be a little bit risky as Matsushita is pitting and basically everyone that's at the, on the mediums is pitting uh, Ricardo is going to pit in the same lap and they have it skipping all the way forward onto lap 18 it's been a great race for us considering our starting position from P8 to P2 I'll take that every single day of the week Hamilton 18 seconds cleared of us that is uh, a proper Lewis Hamilton domination today but they have it Kevin Magnussen out of the race because he bought us he's lead loads of pace he's already in the TRS range despite losing that much time with the back markers but the Magnussen race comes to an early end and the safety car is going to be deployed they have it confirmation the safety car is out and this is absolute gold I dare to say this is absolute diamonds because we're going to get a free pit stop and I think this can get ahead of Kvyat and uh, Ricardo. So this is really good for us. This safety car on point, one of the best well-timed safety cars. Actually, if you are an absolute OG and watch my F1 2019 career mode with Red Bull in season two, this exact moment happened and it was at this exact same track. If you remember that race, you are an absolute OG. I think we won that race, I'm not entirely sure, but probably we did that because it was a very well-timed safety car and we were the best car on the grid. But you can see drag race with Ricardo, but unfortunately he's going to take that position and it is in P3. So it's Hamilton, Kvyat and then Ricardo. However, we have the better tires and who knows if Hamilton gets overtaken at the start by Kvyat, Maybe we can have a very good chance to get ahead, at least, of the Brit. I don't know. It's a huge question mark at the moment. The biggest loser of uh, this safety car, it is George Russell. Outside of the top five. I think it is on the final point Spain position. 
and this is not really good for us when it comes to the constructors. Lando Norris is looking very good in a very lofty position. I'm not entirely sure what is the exact position, but pause at the moment as the extra point as we are getting ready to get this Grand Prix on the way for the final time. We have 12 laps to go, and hopefully Kvyat can be a little bit of a bother to Hamilton as now we try and get the Becks exit and they have it. The Grand Prix gets underway at the circuit of Barcelona and I want to not lose that much time with this guy's slipstream on Daniel Ricciardo. You can see that Kvyat is a little bit close, he's going to their dive down inside on Hamilton. No, he doesn't have the tyres for that, he's on the harder compound of tyres. And I, I dare to say, look at the gap that oh, Hamilton is already forming, how much he's stretching that distance over the Porsche car. And I think I dare to say that Hamilton is going to have the race in his hand because we have to wait an entire lap to get close to the gearbox of the Russian. They have it, slipstream, switcheroo to the right hand side of the track. It's going to be the inside line that we're going to take into the first corner. And uh, there you go, that is an easy move on the Porsche. But you can see Hamilton already 2.2 seconds clear. And here comes Valtteri Bottas on the start, finish straight on Daniel Ricciardo. Actually, he's not gaining that much because Ricciardo has a very nice DRS thanks to Kvyat. But Bottas is going to take that position very easily. And then a few moments later, maybe two laps later, Bottas sails past the Porsche and is up into the final step of the podium. So he could have been the first podium for Kvyat in a while in this career mode series. Maybe the first one in this career mode series, but today it wasn't a day to get Porsche's second podium in their brand new adventure in the modern era. Remember that in the first race of this season, Gasly drove a cracking race and he finished in P3. But now we are starting the final lap of this Grand Prix. And uh, I can tell you that during this weekend, the Mercedes have been looking so, so quick. And that shows because here comes Valtteri Bottas trying to make a Mercedes 1-2. Around the inside, he tries to go through the first corner, but uh, we managed to defend that very aggressively. And at the end of the day, we're going to finish in P2 unless we bottle in the final corners. Lewis Hamilton wins once again in Season 3. And Carlos Sainz manages to overtake not just Ricardo, but Kvyat as well. But definitely the Mercedes had the upper hand. But thankfully, thanks to this, safety car thanks to the traffic management we are going to get 18 points well done good finish you stepped up and achieved what we asked good job they've done it then a spectacular victory here in Spain and a massive confidence boost going into the next race What do you think it was, Ants, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. And there you have it, confirmation results, Lewis Hamilton wins the Spanish Grand Prix, followed by myself, starting in P8. Um, it was a very good comeback from us, but uh, qualifying pace is a thing that I really need to improve. Then Bottas signs, Kvyat Verstappen and Russell only managed to finish in P7. That safety car really ruined uh, Russell's plans, and as well, I dare to say, Kvyat and Ricardo, because they had a very good chance to put those two cars on the podium. But anyway, we move into the championship standings, we're still in P4, and Hamilton stretching even more the lead to Valtteri Bottas, 17 points ahead of his teammate but you can see that we have 38 points over the leader so this is not really good for us construct standings we are 51 points behind monster mercedes so this is a red flag at the moment at Tom Motorsport because we must win the next race at Monaco if you want to get any chance to fight Mercedes in the constructor standing. Generally the crunch time is in the final races of this season but I dare to say that crunch time is going to start um, in the next episode at the streets of the Principality. That has been episode 42 of my F1 2010 My Team Career Mode. Guys, if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash the like button and if you're new make sure to subscribe if you want to watch weekly F1 content. But that has been me for today. My name's Tom and I'll see you guys for a brand new video next time. But for now, take it.